Alright everyone, thanks for tuning in today for our video lectures on moment generating functions. We'll actually end up having two videos to address this topic. Um, we'll have one going about a problem in the tedious and more difficult way. Um, it'll be a little longer to do that and then we'll also um, show you how to improve your speed and efficiency in dealing with moment generating functions and how we can approach those problems to increase our speed and maybe give us a few extra minutes on actuary exams. So um, moment generating functions are typically a concept that's not um, shown in basic probability courses that undergraduates might take. It's instead taught in Mathematical Statistics 1 or sometimes Applied Statistics 1 depending on the professor. So what are moment generating functions? Moment generating functions are quite simply a means that we use to find various expected values for different mathematical distributions. So how do we find moment generating functions? We denote the moment generating function for a random variable x as the following, mx of t. So it's important to note that t here is not the random variable in question, um, x is. And that will always be the variable or variables if you have a multivariate case that are outside of the parentheses. Um, that's how you know what your random variable in question is. So our moment generating function is equal to the expected value of e time to the tx. So for a discrete random variable with our PMF, our probability mass function, p of x, our moment generating function is equal to the summation across all x, so across our random variables, e tx times our probability mass function, our PMF. For a continuous case where we have a PDF, probability density function, of course we're going to use integrals. It's going to look very similar. And these infinities just denote across the entire domain for a random variable x. Don't forget that dx. So once we find the moment generating function for a random variable in question, we can calculate our moments by taking the derivative of the MGF and evaluating the derivative at zero. The first moment is going to be equal to our first expected value. The second moment is our second expected value. Um, this will become a little more clear when I write it out here mathematically in a second. So this is the type of relationship we're dealing with here. So we can now easily see the value of moment generating functions. By knowing the moment generating function of a random variable or a distribution, you can quickly calculate the expected values that you need and you can find the mean, the um, variance, and the standard deviation for a random variable x, y. If you have more than one, you can certainly do that. Um, it just gives you a lot of flexibility in how you want to approach these types of issues. Um, most professors that are going to be teaching the course will show you how to actually derive a moment generating function. However, if you know certain crucial um, facts about the type of problem you're working with, like if you know it's mean, and you can apply that to the distribution and you already offhand know a general form of the MGF for that distribution, you can create the MGF yourself take the derivative and find the expected value very quickly. So we're going to transition into a problem that will hopefully clear up some uh, confusion you guys might have. This is of course coming again from a probability course for actuaries and the problem reads, an actuary determines the claim size of a certain class of accidents as a random variable x with moment generating function. And this is our MGF. Determine the standard deviation of the claim size for this class of accidents. So all we have to do is find our standard deviation, which we know is the square root of our variance, which we know is our second moment, minus the square of our first moment. 
So we're just transitioning into the um, jargon of expected values, and we're connecting that with moments. This is the second moment. This is the first moment. So we know how to find our first moment. We just have to take the derivative of our moment generating function and evaluate it at 0. So this is a chain rule problem. We're going to take this down here. We're going to get negative 4 times the derivative inside of here. The derivative of this with respect to t is going to be negative 2500. Negative 2500 times negative 4 is going to be 10,000. Then we just take the derivative of this. We get the following. Now we take our second derivative of the exact same thing. We apply the chain rule here. We're going to end up with 125 million. You can go ahead and check me if you don't believe me. Um, it makes things difficult in calculating by hand. You'll be able to use a um, scientific calculator with you. There shouldn't be any problem with that. So in order to find our first moment, all we have to do is just take our first derivative, evaluate it at 0. So this is going to go to 1. We're going to get 10,000. Similarly, our second moment is going to be equal to the following. We're going to get 125 million here. So now all we have to do is apply this, and we'll have our standard deviation. So we have the square root of 125 million minus 10,000 squared. And this is going to give us 5,000. So we now know our standard deviation for these claims for the accidents based on this given moment generating function. There's a shorter way to go about this. Unfortunately, we don't have time to do that in this video due to um, constraints based on time. We're going to create a second video where we show you guys different properties. We're going to go over some old material in order to increase our speed and efficiency on that. So definitely tune in for our next video, guys. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day.